Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Um, this is Adriana from Crafty Kids, and this week is all about Teacher Appreciation Week since it was the last day of school on Friday. So all the moms are celebrating and I am cheering with my wine down Wednesday cup and my frosé. And I have my co-host Colette waiting in the background. Colette, can you, are you there? I'm here. Hi. I'm getting, tasting the frosé for the first time that you recommended. Okay. Let's, Let's see say. how it goes. Mmm. I like it. That's good. I like it. It's sweet, but it's good. It's good. Oh, that's it's great really by the good. pool. It's great by the it's, pool. It's good because you don't have to put it in a blender. No. You, you stick just it right in the freezer. It in that bag. Beautiful. That's it. That's it. Nice recommendation. Oh, thank you. Well, I have oh. my regular Pinot, and okay. I was going to do Frosé. But okay. I've had quite a busy week. My husband was on vacation, so that meant right. we were in the pool a lot. We were drinking a lot. Well, I was. Nice. Maybe not him. <laughs> I was. Um, right. We went to. We actually went to the beach this weekend. Oh, and nice. What it beach? was Brigadine down by oh, Atlantic okay. City. So past LBI. Oh yeah, no, it was far. Oh wow, um, nice. But, um, my girlfriend has like um, passes. She has to get to house okay. down there, so it's not like anybody could just go on the beach. So it was it was smaller, so it was it was nice. comfortable. But they did have a restaurant on the beach, so which was nice. I had my first outdoor dining experience. Oh, um, nice! That was really really nice. Um, but by the end of the the week, um, I was kind of feeling a little heavy. <laughs> So <laughs> I decided to, I jumped on the dreaded scale on Monday. Oh no, you did. And I had to, well, you know what happened was in the beginning of all of this, right? I knew I was going to gain weight, but just because I know my personality and I know the first thing I did as soon as, first of all, I was on a diet when this whole thing yeah, started. Okay, too. I was on Weight Watchers. Literally, they said school was closed. <laughs> and I just like, ate a bag of Doritos. Like mm -hmm. that's just what happened. And I then know. it just like spiraled and spiraled. And every day I was baking more and more cookies, things I would never, ever do. Never have. Yeah, same. And then the alcohol, right? So you start with the wine, then you're homeschooling. So now it's wine every day, one glass, two glass. And it just became like a habit. So oh, in yeah. the beginning, like a month in, I weighed myself and I was up like four pounds. And I was like, all right, not a big deal. Four pounds, I could lose that in a week yeah, or two. No run, big deal. Run it off the treadmill. Yeah. Sure. So that was like April 15th. And I haven't been on the scale since. And I'm so getting no, worse, no. And worse and worse and worse. So I was like, all right, Monday, I'm going to go on. Got on the scale. I am officially up 10 pounds since this started. And I was like, okay. all right, I need to do something about this right now. So um, I got my Weight Watchers app up that I haven't, you know, even though I get the weekly alerts, you should weigh in. You should oh, weigh yeah, in. Sure. And I'm like, you right. too swipe swipe so I'm like all right I have to do this and um so I was like let me see with these dailies frosé you know what, how what much they how are. Much oh, are. no don't even tell me I didn't even look so, I didn't even look I so for those of you who don't do Weight Watchers it goes on like a point system so it's not like calories um each food has a different point value usually things that are high in protein and like no carbs and stuff are less points and then things that have sugar carbs are more points oh yeah right um so basically, just to give you an idea, I get 23 points for the whole day, okay? <laughs> so I, I, go, I go on 14 points. Oh, wow. Yes. That's so worse I was than like, a glass of wine. A glass of wine is only seven. Oh, this is four. No, no. Five oh. ounces of white Pinot Grigio is four points. All right. Five I, ounces. All right, I don't want to get into the whole, you okay. know, but that's, <laughs> I digress. I digress. So that's why I am drinking Pinot, because... Frosé just wasn't Too within sugary. the daily counter. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. But no, I will look it. forward to my wine every week. This is, I say this now, that this is will be my one glass a week, which is probably so a Wednesday lie. Wednesday will be one glass a week. Yes, which is a lie. I already know that, right. considering 4th of July is on Saturday. Right. Um, but these are the things I like to tell myself. But cheers. I've been waiting cheers all day. Cheers to that. Day. I know, right? <laughs> cheers to your... To your Weight Watcher, your weight, your weight loss. Yeah. Let's talk next week. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> but, um, anything extra going on this week? Anything, well, you announced that you're doing your summer classes. Yeah. So um, I want to re-announce that I'm doing my summer classes. Right. Um, so 
for those of you who haven't tuned in before, I am a Zumbini instructor, which is a music and movement class for children ages zero to four with a caregiver. So it's essentially a mommy and me type class. Um, when all this started, I decided to do virtual classes. They've been going very well. Um, but I'm starting a new session. So we did spring session and we ended that in the beginning of June. Um, and I will be starting a six week summer session on July 11th. I will be offering three different classes a week um, on Saturdays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Um, the session is $37, so you can't beat the price for all six classes. And you can come as many times during the week that you wish and you get a free downloadable uh, music code for all the music that we use in class. So it's a lot of fun. It's a family activity. So if you have older siblings and younger siblings, it's something they can do together. And it's something that, you know, the parents have fun doing with the children as well. So um, for more information on that, you could just go to my Zubini with Colette page. Um, but more importantly, this Sunday, I am doing a fundraiser. Uh, one of my Zubini babies, he's two and a half. His name is Rocco. Um, he has stage four neuroblastoma. Um, so when I had reached out to his mom just to see what I could do, um, they had set up a GoFundMe um, for the team at Soul Kettering, uh, for the neuroblastoma team there. So they set up that um, GoFundMe account. So I am doing a fundraiser where all the proceeds from this event will go towards that GoFundMe. So it's this Sunday at 10.15, it is via Zoom. Um, you can, like I said, visit my Facebook page, Zumbini with Colette. All the information is there, um, how you can pay uh, through Venmo, PayPal. Uh, you can reach out to me, message me. Um, I've had a bunch of people who just donated that aren't even coming to the class, which was fantastic. Um, last week, I know I had said to you that I was hoping to raise $500. Um, it has been just a week, and I just, I am almost at the $700 mark. So oh, I'm awesome. really... Awesome. I'm trying to up that now. Like I'm hoping to get, I know it's a lot, but I'm hoping to get to a thousand. So yeah. um, I'm awesome. really trying to put it out there. Um, it really is for a great cause and it really is a lot of fun. So um, if anybody would like to join us or to donate, please reach out. Um, it really is for a good cause. As a if mom. Have, yeah, go ahead. If you have older kids, you could just always donate, right? Yeah. You don't have to. Okay, cool. Of course, cool. you can always donate. Um, but even somebody like yourself, like if your niece wanted to do it, you donated. So if you wanted to give, you know, if you want, if your niece wanted to come on, you oh, can I absolutely give her. Oh, yes. All right. Yes. Absolutely. Give me the link. You probably like it. I definitely will. So definitely. Awesome. So this week, we have no more school. We're done. Thank God. School's Ooh. out. Let's cheers to that. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of moms cheers. excited yes. about school ending. Especially this year has been rough. Yes. Very rough. I mean, we were not expecting to go through what we had to go through. And, you know, when COVID hit, everything started to become remote learning. And it was hell, I think. <laughs> right? I mean, listen, you... I think everybody, as a, we're both moms, obviously. Um, you have three children, which I'm sure was a lot harder than me. I have two children. Oh, dude. Um, but I feel like everybody has their own stories with this. Like, I can't imagine what it was like for a working parent. Like, I'm no, home, no. you know, because I can't, I was able to still teach classes, but I did it around schedule when my husband was home. So, like, I was right. able to do that. Um, but for those people, those parents who were full-time working parents and them working with Great. their kids, for people who had more than, I mean, three, four, five kids, I, I can't even imagine no. I had such a hard time. I mean, I have a pre-K and a second grader and just getting my pre-K, pre-K to focus was the, well, both of them really, but him, it was a big struggle. But as soon as I would get him to focus, my daughter would then want the attention. So it was like, uh -huh. and then they would get up yep. and run around. And then I have the other um, thing where my husband works at night. So he was sleeping during the day. So now I'm trying yeah, so to keep like, them quiet. quiet. Yeah. It was for me, yeah. it was definitely hard, um, but I'm sure there yeah. are people that it was much harder for. So I think yeah. everybody has their own takes on it. Some people, listen, there were days, I'm not going to lie, that I was grateful for it. Because I didn't have to get up. I didn't have, right. to, like, didn't have to. It wasn't the hustle and bustle of going. 
Yes. Like so getting that, everybody up, breakfast, getting it, you know, getting in the car, making stop and drop, all that. And then, you know, going to pick them up. That I didn't miss. No. But I mean, I do now. But <laughs> then I didn't miss it so much. Yes. But it's like you you can't do the job of your of your of a teacher. I'm sorry. No, You're a parent. And and I say it to the moms that come to my classes that are like, oh, well, you know, let's say Johnny's not behaving and, and he usually isn't like this. And, and he, do, he doesn't act. He doesn't act like this at home when they're with a teacher. They act totally different 100%. than when they are at home. They listen. They're respectful. I mean, I love my kids to death. But when they're with their teacher, they're at their best. Oh, yeah. I try to do it at home. Was it, it was insane. The best is when we would have like, you know, we still had parent teacher conference, yes. was, you know, on the phone and the teacher would be like saying all these ones. Listen, I think my daughter's wonderful. Don't get me wrong. Right. But, the be- <laughs> but, the, but the behavior level, like, because they were mm. talking about third marking period, like when they were in school, you know, uh, she's, she listens, she does this, she helps out. Oh, yeah. she oh, yeah. like, I'm like, she doesn't yeah, do this at all. Nope. Yes. But I feel like that's with, Everybody, Every your kid. child yeah. is going to try to get whatever they can get out of you and push the limits with you that they wouldn't do with a teacher. It's true. It's true. They take advantage and they know that there was like no boundaries. We didn't know what was going on. Mm-mm. So we were in a scramble. They're in a scramble and they know when to take advantage. So, and that's what I think, like they knew that, all right, this, I mean, yeah, we have to do the work, but it's not really like school. Yes. And I think that you they know? know that we were frustrated too. Right. So right. like there were times that you were just like, all right, break, go do it. Like I had That's to do it. that we'll do what you a do. bunch mm-hmm. of times during the day, like where it got too intense. I was just like, go play a game for a little bit. Come back. We're done. Yeah. No. No. I know. Yes. I know. But we're going so we to have, I know me too. Thank God it's over. Oh, uh, Nicole said, Adriana said yesterday, Miss Colette, I want to go to her house. I said the dance studio. Oh, so cute. Oh, I miss all my babies so much. I really I know, do. I know. And it's so funny because, I mean, you're having camp, right? So Yes, yes. We have our summer sessions. I'm still at the point where you do Mommy Me also, but obviously you're not doing Mommy Me during the yeah, summer. Yeah, not yet. Right. And I think it's like phase four, but the more that I think yeah. about it, I'm like, I don't even know how that would work with toddlers. Like they can't, they, they can't keep away from each other. No. And then like my whole thing is based on like my facial expressions because it's music and it's movement. And, and I'm like those, did you ever see those clear masks? Like with the clear, they have like a yes. clear insert. Yes. That's so scary. I'm like, so that's, creepy. Not, that's so, so creepy. creepy. So creepy. So I'm like, I had so many moms asking me, is Zumbini starting this summer? Can we come back to class? And I'm like, not yet. I'm like, I know. I said, and I refuse, like, I cannot teach a class with a man. No, you can't do dance and and music with a man. And and singing, I'll be like. That was the thing with my, that was a big thing with my summer sessions. And a lot of the parents that signed up were okay with us not wearing masks. Because we said the same thing. We have two, uh, two, three, four, and five-year-olds. First of all, some of these kids have not been dropped off since March to anywhere. So how are they going to get dropped off into my classroom and not cry and not want their mom? And then, and then you're going to see three, uh, me and three girls wearing masks. It's more scary for them, I feel. And it's not like we're really on top of them anyway. Yes. So I don't think it's, I don't know. It's, it's just nuts. I think it's just all crazy. Yes, especially yeah. for that age. For that age, it's going to be tough. Like the preschools, and that you know, and even kindergarten, they still don't know not to share. And not, I mean, the kids are still picking their noses. Yep. yep. You know, so I don't know, but this is why we have on today, Miss um, Garitano, Alexa Garitano, and Miss Kelly Zito. Hi. Hi, ladies. Hi, Hi Kelly. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> what are you guys having? You're having. What are you drinking today? So I have my grown up juice, Moscato. You have Moscato. Yes. And I'm having it in my after school snack. Oh, oh nice. So you're using your your um your glasses wisely. Yeah. And I think Kelly's going to drink. Oh, high noon. Kelly, so, those are everybody's a big fan of those. Okay. Huge those are the best. Fan. Huge fan. So now, Alexa, you teach second grade. Second grade GMT. 
No, first, first grade. grade. I'm sorry, first grade. First grade, Jancy, not second grade. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kelly, you're a paraprofessional. Yep. What, what age? Um, last year, all this year, I had pre-K. Oh wow! Yeah, all that right. was an awesome, awesome. Google yeah, that is awesome. That, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I, I tried it once with my um, my drop because I do pre pre K, so they're like two and three year olds. I tried it once and it was a disaster. I mean, I know yeah. even with my kindergartners, they were like taking the phone and they're like, "Oh, you want to go see my room and look at this?" No, guys, what are you? And all they do is this. Like, Hi. Yeah. Hi. I, know. <laughs> I know. I know. That's screaming over you and on huh? on they just scream over you. Oh, and yeah. you know you're muting them because you can control right. that, and then they're unmuting. So in first grade, they knew how to unmute themselves, and then oh, wow. them over you. So that was so. Fun. What was your opinion about what happened? Like the remote learning? How did I know? I know you guys. I know as teachers and as parents, nobody really. You want to be in your classroom. You don't want to be at home. And and a lot of people are like, oh well, the teachers they they're just being lazy. They want to be home. They don't, we don't want to be home. We want to be in class with your kids and we, you, you want to be teaching them. And even Colette, even me and Colette that do recreational classes, it's not, it's not the same as doing it on the computer, right? It's horrible. There's no not horrible. Horrible. interaction. There's nothing. It's, and it's hard to reach their attention. There's right. like, no, you can't say, okay, look over here. Cause they're, you know, no. mm -hmm. we're lucky if they come dressed when they come on the Google Meet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I know. Underwear. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, pre K, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, first grade is a little bit easier yeah. than pre K, yeah. A little bit, yeah. Um, they still needed a lot of assistance and you know, it was just a learning curve for everyone. And it just was not what you know, like you said before, like at first you were like, Oh, this is cool. I didn't miss certain things. Like getting right. up in the morning, getting dressed, like that. that right. Was, but it just still doesn't replace being in person, in class. no in setting, like with your materials and with the kids and your routine. And it just, you can't replace that. No, you can't. No, you can't. And you guys, I mean, like us, you guys were just as much a shock than the parents were, right? Because I think you had like a week to prepare, yeah. even if that. Three days. Yeah. That was it? Oh, wow. Yeah. So what they do, they just told you, that's it, we're going to be remote learning and get all your stuff and go? That's well, crazy. Well, they didn't even tell us to get all the stuff because we no. assumed we were going back. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. So you didn't even have to get to the classrooms? No. Wow. Well, wow. the three days we were in, like, the building, we were together planning. Um, But we were planning as if we were coming back, you know, after right. spring break. And it was like, right. okay, new review. Just we'll keep these kids fresh for when we come back. Um, whatever feelings we had, it was like, okay, well, maybe we'll take some stuff just in case, like the lesson plans or materials. But we were under the impression we were going to come back. We never thought it was going to go this sure. far. Yeah, this so, far, yeah. Yeah, and it just, you know, we really, like Kelly said, we had three days in the building planning, and then that was it. We were done. We were sent off. Um and just had to start, you know, just hit the ground running as yeah. if wow. trained it all along. And yeah. we were being thrown things just like everyone else. We were finding out things along with everyone else. It wasn't, you know, we didn't have the go ahead, the head start. It was like, okay, right. here's the thing. Now you have to show it to, you know, 30, all the parents and 30 kids. And there you go. And wow. being about it, it was not, it wasn't and it's, not like, it's not like you guys are trained to be doing this online. No, so you're probably just an IT tech. Like I don't know yeah. how to be an IT. You know, I can't right. solve the issue and know how to so lie. Goes down and you're like, what do I do now? Right. I know. And then you have the parents texting you, I'm sure, because there was a few times that I was messaging my kids' teachers, you know, that are also in PS42 with you guys. I have Palumba and Agno who were amazing this whole entire time. But I'm still texting them like, what was that code to get on? And what was the password? And I, I have three kids. So I have kindergarten and third grade because I have the twins. And and it was funny because I was going to separate them for kindergarten. And then I didn't this year. I'm like, no, well, let's keep them together. I'm kind of glad I didn't because I can't see doing like 
two kindergarten classes and a third. And I don't work. So imagine going to work or having to work all day and then do this in the afternoon. It, it was just insane. I know. It was hard. Yeah. Do it was hard. Of you, Alexa, do you have kids at home that you were trying to teach while you are okay? No, and I'm so thankful for that because, I mean, so many of the teachers I work with, they had that situation. Yes. I we had would be on, yeah, like we would be on Google Meets trying to do grade meetings and plan or talk, and then they would have to constantly stop and teach. they're dealing with their kids, you know, who's coming to sit on their lap, yeah. their attention, who's fighting, like it just... And I would sit there and I'd say, wow, I'm, I'm really thankful that, you know, I do have a situation where I'm, you know, I don't have children. I'm here in my home safe. Right. I'm able to focus. But um, it wasn't like that for, you know, everyone. Yeah, so, no. I, I went to high early. school and had to take uh. my, well, my youngest. I have three older ones. One's in, one's in college. One's a EMT. One is actually working at ShopRite. But my 16-year-old was in high school. Yeah, she got away from the regions, but she had to take her AP bio. To, and like a lot, I don't oh. know. I don't know no. these classes. No. I don't know no. trigonometry anymore. I don't know AP bio. No. She had I to take do third grade math. I, I was I just going to say, I had a hard enough time with number one. <laughs> so I had to do my classroom. And then there was like three or four students that I were helping on other grades. One was on kindergarten. One was in third grade. Like I'd have to call them and do it individually. Thank God I brought home a dry erase board. That's all I can say. Cause I was yeah. like, well, this is how we're doing it. But with my yeah. daughter, I didn't know how to help her. And to take yeah. an AP bio test, we had to leave the house because if like somebody walked in the room while she was taking the test, they got invalidated. And she had to have oh, wow. one device watching her take the test while she was taking it on her computer. Oh, that's insane. It was that's insane. insane. It was insane. Crazy. Mm -hmm. I like so I left the house for an hour and then I was so afraid. Hold on a minute. Some call oh, this my son's girlfriend. I was so afraid <laughs> that I was gonna um like invalidate her test that I parked outside the house and I'm sitting there going, I don't even want to knock on the door. I'm afraid I know you don't want to get in trouble, right? Shush up, Jackson. <laughs> and then <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> large household. I have four of them. That's okay. Family. No, are you kidding me? <laughs> and so, like, I pulled up in front of the house, and I'm sweating. I'm looking at my other daughter. I'm like, I don't want to open the door. But she actually texted me at like when I pulled up. She goes, "You can come in. I'm done." I was like, "Thank you." Uh, wow. Wow. So that's we, nice. And we don't have the grade back. And so you she, don't know. her teacher has two younger kids. So to like review for the test, all the Google meets were at five and six o'clock at night. So instead of like during the normal school day, she was taking care of her kids at home. So then all of her classes, like she had trigonometry at six o'clock and AP bio at five. Wow. I'm like, dude, what happened to dinner time? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, it's true. It's it was true. tough. I'm saying everybody had their own issues like that teacher obviously had issues because she had her own kids home yeah. so like that yeah. was another thing I wanted to ask how did you guys feel like the parents responded to you guys because I know on the other end of it being a parent you know we have you know a class group chat that the teacher's not in that it's just the parents yeah. um, and yeah we um, have those some of the, well some of the teachers listen some of them are, I don't want to say older. That might not be, they're not tech savvy. It has nothing to do with age, but sometimes yeah. it does. Um, and I know people were getting upset and, and I want to, and I, I would be the one to say, guys, this, like, they don't know. Yeah. Like, they're trying to learn just as we are, you know? And then some yeah. people were complaining that it was too much work because like I said, some parents are home, they have three or four kids, you know, it's too much for them to handle. Then other people were complaining, you know, that it wasn't enough work. Not and it's like, yeah. Nobody was ever like at a good, happy place. You know what I mean? I feel like, and on the teacher's end, I'm sure the texts that they must have received or did you guys get bad feedback from your teacher? I mean, be generalized, obviously. I don't want you to call anybody out, but generally, how were your parents responding to the remote learning? You can hit that first, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say no comment. Because I would probably get myself into trouble. But yeah, um, yeah, she probably can't answer that. Well, I mean, I would say that general, like in the group I teach, um, I do have a demanding crowd 
And it's a mix. I mean, Adriana was one of my parents, and I wish I could have yeah. her 30 times. My whole, yeah. Like, not she, has, she has a tough, it's a tough, we're, she, we're in the gene, my son's in the GNT program. He had her for the first grade. So it's already a tough crowd. So bringing that home, like I've seen it and how we dealt with it with Ms. Palumba on line two for the third grade. It's tough. It's tough because you already have so much demand of being in that program. So trying to do, I want to say like G&T appropriate stuff on the computer and then want their, their expectations are already so high. It, it's just a tough, it's not like a general answer to that question, I yeah. think. I don't know. It's tough. I, I do have to say though, I do think that um, most of my parents understood because they were going through the struggle and they knew and yeah. they, they knew, okay, I'm not a teacher. I can't do this. So they were very appreciative of a lot of the things that we were doing and that I was helping them and constantly, and I was responding to them right away. Whenever, you know, they sent me something, I was on it helping them. So they right. were very appreciative and they told me that over and over again. So I can't say I mean, I, I'm sure there was um, comments on the Facebook page and their own group text, and I'm sure. Um, but I try my best to always diffuse that and, um, you know, just try to help. So I think that right. they they were okay. They were just, a, they were very appreciative. And whoever did have questions or problem, they reached out and we addressed it. But it was, it was, it was hard because you're dealing with, not really the children so much you're dealing more with the parents, parents you're to yeah. them. so it's it, true. that was the tedious part of you know like trying to give them lessons and it was like oh my goodness like i just want to be with the kids <laughs> like i just yeah, want to be it's true. With it's true. because it's true. it was a lot more tedious to deal with yeah. the parents but, no it is because you had a time that got to me it was already like the, it got to me was when the teacher couldn't help and the student couldn't help and the mom was like could you just go over this one problem so i was like okay i'm like all right i'm gonna i'm grabbing them on face most of the time it was on facebome because it was during the right. phone i have my classroom running on the computer and i'd be like all right relax you know and then i used to like calm down we'll get it done you know it's one problem or it's we'll read the story together that kind of thing so by the time they got to me it was the parent going here. Just, just, just take her for do it. Just do it. So you know, it was always like, what'd you have for dinner, or you know, what would you have for breakfast to break the ice to get them to calm down? Because by the time they got to me, they were like, I can't do this no more. I don't want to do this no more. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you can do all right, but let's get it done. Mm -hmm. We've had many of those moments in my life. <laughs> me too. I have to say, my third grader was okay. He just didn't know, like. And now another funny thing about the whole remote learning is these kids have never used a typewriter. Oh, so oh. now he has to type his papers. Now Alexa knows Antonio. Antonio struggled with um, with reading and writing. So I hated that he had to type it. So mm -hmm. I would make him write it, and then I would type it for him. But he had, and I told the teacher, "This is what I'm going to do." And I would sh send her pictures just because he couldn't lose. I didn't want him to lose his handwriting skills already. And not to mention, it took him five hours. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, just write it. I will type it, and we'll call it a day. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. There were times that I was just like, I just did it. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just, I, there I were times at the end. I was just, and it was that so was funny. Be my next question, like, if you guys figured it out when, like, we would do it for the. Well, instantly, you know, instantly. There's a couple times in the comments. Tell mommy I said thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you know it was amazing. Um, the writing was just you know, the, so periods, the vocabulary. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. You know, I would I would add on his essays, I, and he'd be like, "Wow, mom, that's a great idea." Yes. I'm like, I know <laughs> that does sound good. Yeah. And it's so funny. I would do that. Like Molly, I'd be like, but you have to elaborate. Like you can't just say them right. or whatever. You have to elaborate. And then I'm like, and I would do it and I would send it. I'm like, but that's how she would write in school. Know. Like right. she would she just write right. that, you know? Yeah. Right. But it was like, so funny. Right. You would tell, you would, you could tell like when Antonio used to bring home his writing assignments and he would write two or three sentences and be over with it. And I'm like, no, you're writing more. And he would yell at me. He'd be like, Miss Palumbra is not this mean in class. I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> But like you have to do it. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. And the, and my my twins were forget it. The twins they loved 
Miss Ryan. They loved, you know, gym class was, is their favorite. Uh, it's fun. So mm -hmm. it's exactly gym, art, music. Miss Ryan. Right. Just and, so, and Miss Ryan's amazing. Yeah. So she, um, I, I, I text her and I'm like, listen, they're giving me such a hard time doing this freaking online yoga or whatever. They actually told me that the yoga instructor sucks. They want to be with Miss Ryan. So she, she FaceTimed them and it was hysterical. They were like, we didn't say that. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, I don't think you had to FaceTime them. Yeah, and she did. She's like, oh, yeah, I'll do it for the boys. I love them. And she, and it was good. Like, you could see, and that's another thing. It got me emotional seeing them, seeing you guys, you know? Like, it was, it was, it was sad. It was sad. It really was. You know, it's like, happy I to see you. Yesterday with, with Rose Garcia. And where I was waiting in, she was running into Starbucks. And a kid, a student come, came out of Target. And he was like, Miss Tata. Oh my God, this Miss Garcia. Yeah. Like, who would have thought we were Batman and Robin? I oh, was yeah. Like, he went oh, yeah. running over oh, yeah. to me. I was like, and the mom, I was like, all right, let me grab my mask. I don't want to upset your mom. So I grabbed the mask and I looked at the mom. And I'm like, is it okay? Because he's on my leg. Can I hug him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. But it felt good. Like, he was like, I miss you guys. I'm like, yeah, we miss you too. No, I know it is. It is sad. It is. Did you guys find that some of the kids, like I found, like especially with my pre-K, um, that he actually kind of became more introverted being home? Like he had no interest in doing anything school related whatsoever. Like, not that they had Zooms often because he goes to a private pre-K. It wasn't public. Um, but they would get on once every week, you know, just to see the kids. And my son had no interest. He wasn't really showing much emotion towards like missing school or anything else. But like, I don't know if it was, you know, I don't know if that was common with the kids because they were just so, you know, cut off. Did I you guys saw see that? a lot of digression with my pre kers Oh yeah. Where I had kids that were in the beginning of the school year crying, crying, crying. And then we get on the meet. And they'd be like all the way in the corner. And I'd be like, yeah. you know, say hi. And it'd be like this. And then mom's in the background going, hi. I'm like, and then the baby talk was coming back. And all of these yeah. things that, you know, you corrected for so long because it's age appropriate. They're babies. They don't understand. They reverted. Yeah. And we actually used being the age, the pre-K age. A lot of the times I found the parents using us as like a weapon, like, if you don't, if you don't behave, I'm going to tell Miss Kelly. Or if you don't behave, right. you're not. I'm like this. Well, that's not the way to get things done. No, it's true. It's true. Well, I see. Yeah. Jessica just wrote that her son is in pre-K, completely regressed, and became more yeah. introverted. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was getting a lot of text from the kids that are in my drop-off. You know, the same thing that they 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 were they were just getting used to. Like, I'm kind of the same age as Kelly. But my, I'm actually a year younger. There are three, the ones that are in my class. And we were, in March, we were just getting them to sit in circle time. Like, because, you know, the, the, these are 20 little three-year-olds to try to get. And then now I can't see them being okay in September to leave mom and dad again. Mm -hmm. Even with first, even, even kindergarten and first graders, some of them are yeah. still shy to go to, go to class, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I say, I found, go ahead, Alexa. All right. I found that. Um, I, I definitely think I wasn't uh, first grade is not as bad as the pre-K with that because they did have the full year of kindergarten and they had a half year in first grade to adjust the routines being away. Um, but then I found that a lot of my students who were introverted in class were actually like they would talk to me over camera the more more so than in class. They were they had a voice and I'd say, oh, my goodness. Like, I never heard you in class speak like this or present, talk to other children on the meets. Um, but I do think that it's going to be hard for them to come back because yeah. they're getting comfortable being home, having that confidence. And then they, once they're thrown back in, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard for them. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very nervous for like, especially because my son was pre-K four. So now going into kindergarten, into this new school year, mm -hmm. especially because he's going to a new school. So he wasn't in pre-K four yeah. in the public school. Um, how do you, what do you guys think, um, how the transition is going to be for, for kids for next, for the fall, especially the young ones that are moving from pre-K say to kindergarten or even kindergarten to first grade. Do you think that it's going to be, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. 
-hmm. They're all going to regress. They're all going to yeah. regress. Everything that they learned up until March is now gone. So, like, right. they're, they're worried about just losing over the summer. You're talking about losing a whole school year. Yeah. No, it's it's crazy. Do you think that they're gonna uh, they're gonna try to correct? I don't want to say correct. I don't know what the right word is here. The curriculum to meet that difference. You see what I'm saying? Because they lost that time. Do you think that they will, or do you think they're just gonna try to make it up by shoving more stuff to, like in a small period of time? I mean, if you go by the record of the system we follow, I don't. It's hard to say because we really haven't been given a plan. And it's hard to say, you know, if we're still remote learning or, or, you know, partially remote learning and partially going in. I don't even know how that's going to really help because we're going to be stuck in between still. And it's like we're never going to be back to that normal day to day routine. And how to catch them all up is going to be very hard. So I don't I can even imagine that. Do you have any suggestions for the parents? Um, I mean, I know obviously we go over certain things just like we would do with, I guess, summer learning. Um, but do you have any suggestions what we could do to, I think the issue is too, because over the summer, my kids just think that, you know, school is over. Like I try every day. I'm like, all right, we're going to do our sight words today. And then I try to get my daughter to read her yeah. book, which she usually likes to read, but like they see summer and like, cause we were counting down the days to summer. I'm like, done. I yeah. mm -hmm. And I now they're just like refusing to do anything, but I'm so nervous that especially this time, other like last summer, I'll be honest with you. I really didn't keep on top of it. My daughter's really good in school and my son was in pre-K three. So I was like, uh, oh, he'll learn when he gets there. But this year, especially, do you suggest that people work every day with their child? Or do you think that that's too much pushing them? Like that they'll rebel even more. I think that just keeping a routine, even if it's not doing um, schoolwork, just keeping them in some sort of routine every day, because that's the biggest um, thing that I feel like is going to be really hard to adjust back to. I think schoolwork and all that, that will come, that'll catch up. But I think just getting into a routine of having to do something at a certain time, yeah. somewhere, I think that is going to be the biggest readjustment. And to keep that throughout the summer, and that could be with, I think that could be any summer activity, just keeping any sort of routine. I know for myself, yeah. you know, how you would be to kind of just like, I was feeling lazy, like, I yeah. just was like, all right, it's the first week of summer, I was getting up a little later, I was, like, moping around, but I'm catching myself, and I think more so than ever, I'm going to some sort of at the same time, you know, having my, like, rituals so that I could get back into the swing, because it's going to be very hard if I don't. Yeah, it is. We have one more teacher that I want to bring out, too. We have Miss Cruz. Eileen? Eileen? Elaine, you there she is. Oh, you're in the car. Hi. We never I had a car. I got in my car because car I couldn't get on at home. I, I, I couldn't get on at home. It was crapping out at Tonville. Exactly. Yeah, so I got in the car and I'm driving around. Well, I'm not driving. My husband's driving. I'm like, just drive. I got to see what they're doing. No. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Elaine, from my car. I've been listening for a while now. Oh, awesome. We're going to hear the I fireworks saw, now in like, the background. I know, right? Comments, I'm like, let me comment. Let me comment so they know I'm here. Yeah. So what do you think about this, Elaine? Elaine is a kindergarten teacher. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So what are your yep. thoughts on this remote learning issue? <laughs> well, I know that my, my, my parents who were involved really took the lessons that I posted, and I posted individual lessons for their children, at their different levels and the the parents who were involved the kids made progress do do i think that remote learning answer no because i don't no. think there's anything that can replace a teacher with her students oh see now i'm pulling back in my driveway you might lose me but i kind of feel like Nothing is going to replace the education with a live teacher who can remediate and correct any mis misunderstanding. Classroom. Right. 
No, I agree. We lost her. We lost her. But she's kind of on the same page that, like, that we all are about this, that it could never replace being online. I mean, being in class rather than online. Of course not. And I feel like the kids also, like, they feed off of being home. Obviously, it's a different environment for them. We try to set routines. But I know in my house, as much as I also tried to set routines, they were very they did everything they could to, to not do those routines. I don't know if that was everybody else. I, I think it depends on the age of your children, you know, the way they interact yeah. with each other also. Um, and I think also they yeah, fed no, off right. of our moods as parents. And I think that right. we were stressed out at home. I know I was, you know, oh, trying, yeah, to, trying to make sure that they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, um, but also yeah, trying but to keep my own sanity. And, you know, you try, but you don't know if you did enough. I know every day I'd be like, am I doing enough? I know my kids like those extracurricular, not extracurricular, but I forget what they called them in school, but like gym, STEM, oh, yeah. um, all those classes, my kids yeah. had no interest in. Anytime we tried to put up any type of YouTube yeah, video of them dancing or anything, my kids would be like, I'm not doing this. Like, And it was just like, at what point... You force them to do things. You step back. I'm sure they would never say that to their teacher, but they absolutely no. said it to no. me. And I think that parents also got to the point also that at certain points we were just like enough is enough for our sanity too. And you would just, you would do the bare minimum some days, you know, just to get through. Yeah. Um, and that's not fair to the kids either, but you know, and I'm sure the teachers felt it too, you know, and I just pray that we're, I, I don't think we will be, but I pray that we're back in school because, uh, you know, these poor parents, like I said, that have to work also that are now actually going back into the offices and now have to deal with, you know, what if it is partial remote learning? Like yeah, that's, that's another issue. Because imagine like me, I have three kids. Oh, well, you know, all right, the twins are in first grade together, but Antonio will be in fourth grade. Are they going to put them like on the same days or do I have to drop right. off right. one of them on Monday, another one on Wednesday. And then I'm going to like, and then I still, I have to go back to work. So, you know, hopefully, I mean, I'm, I should be allowed to be fully open by phase four. So, you know, like who my, I can't expect my mom to, to, you know, to watch my kids and then teach, teach them too. It's going to be insane. And my husband's essential. So he's been working through this whole entire thing. Yeah, mine too. So I haven't been, you know, you know what it's like, Colette, they come home, they're tired. They worked all day. They're not going to, the kids want to play with their dad. They're not going to want to sit and, you know, do homework. You know, it's tough. It's really tough. It's a hard situation all around. It is. You, you went out and then you came back in. We had a lot of parents that were just like, type good morning and then be done with it. And there was no work being done. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That was like, good morning. Yeah. Okay. But what else? Yes. Yeah, no, like, I just, always made sure like that. that. No, I did. I made them do the, I made them yes. do all their work. You yeah, know, we did, we did all the Google meets. Yes. We did their work. I felt like if I don't make them, then what's going to happen next year when they do have to go back, they'll be even further more behind. And my, my Frankie, one of the twins in, in kindergarten, he was already a low level reader. So we were just getting him evaluated for OT and like to put him maybe in an ICT class or some help, some special one-on-one -on -one help. And then it just, you know, then COVID yeah. happened, nothing. But luckily his teacher was amazing. She winds up getting me an AIS teacher to Google meet with him twice a week. So, and she would do sight words with him. She would do reading and just... From him meeting with her one on one, I saw a different difference within like two weeks. I'm like, wow, this kid, instead of me forcing him to do the sight words and then telling me he doesn't like it or, oh, I know it already, and then like blow me off and me screaming my head off, at least I had that teacher help. And I could see that he went up a level. And hopefully by next year, you know, we're working on getting him everything that he needs for next year. Yeah, that's Which another thing. Good. The kids with the services on top of all the teaching. And I'm sure for the, the speech pathologists, the OTs, you know, all those people that are doing some type of intervention, that's got to be tough in itself. I mean, uh, especially with children. I mean, there are children, obviously, who get IEPs and things like that, who have attention issues and stuff like that. So being on the computer, I can't imagine that that's even helping them in any way. Um, no. 
So, um, and I'm know. sure Kelly could tell you one on one on that. Like that's that's got to be tough to get special yeah. intervention from home. I, I I I don't know. The OT was hard. It's impossible because yeah, I was like FaceTiming with one of my kids who's in an older grade while she was doing her OT because she wasn't listening to the OT. So I was there to say, okay, she wants you to bend over, and then I'm doing the exercises with her at the same time, and I'm like, really, yeah. just not working. No, it's not. It's not. And I know a lot of parents that actually didn't sign up for the special intervention classes, like the um, the PT, OT, like they just said, no, they weren't doing it because their kid wasn't, you know, they weren't participating in it. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I mean, speech not so much, but like OT, PT, it's hard. I mean, yeah. you can barely get the kids to go through a regular gym class. No, right. And you yeah. got to at home, I know. I know. Sometimes need that physical cue. Sometimes they need that tap or yeah. Yeah. that, like they need that, and that's part of their accommodation. And you can't do right. that through the screen. You can't no. do that by saying, "Okay, do this." If they're not that type of learner or listener, it's gonna go in and out. It's not gonna help. I and I know people that have their kids that are in like middle school that were like waking up at 11 o'clock and not doing it at all. Oh, so yeah, it's yeah. I, a lot of my friends, like my kids don't even get up on time and they don't even want to sign in or they'll tell me they're signing in and then they'll be playing Minecraft all day. Yeah. So it's just tough. I'm just looking at some of the comments here. We have, oh, so Katie's on. Hi, Katie. Katie's one of my Zumbini moms. She has a three-year-old, uh, Miss Sienna, and she said she's thriving at home. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> um, then we have Shannon saying she's a para and her poor kids are suffering, which yeah, a lot yeah, of people saying that. And Jessica is saying she's not continuing O3 over teletherapy anymore. Speech, thank goodness, is now in person. So, I mean, hopefully they could at least get those services at least yeah. in person right. for the children. Right. Um, but I guess all we have to do is just hope for the best right. and I yeah. guess perhaps for the worst. I mean, everyone's up in the air. I mean, the teachers, you guys, do you think that you'll know like, like at least a few weeks in advance or you think it's going to be like September 1st and they're going to be like, mm -hmm. surprise, this is what's going to happen. Just first. as much as you do. Yeah. Like you find out on channel seven at five o'clock. That's when we find out. Mm -hmm. He's like, either the chancellor sends letters that are so sketchy. It's like, you know, we're, we're hoping for the best, praying, you know, it does come back, we're planning for a second. What does that mean? It's yeah. like TikTok. Yeah. It's a TikTok if you haven't seen it. And she's listening to her um, meeting and it's, we're making a plan to make the plan. And the plan, he's out the plan to get the plan. The plan. Yeah. Like, okay, what is the plan? Because I, even this, more confused than before. Um, and it's just, it's not reassuring. Um, so yeah, we'll find out when you find out. We'll probably find out through a text message from a parent and they'll tell us. Yeah, it's right? Like, <laughs> well, right? I know, it's crazy, it's crazy. It yeah. really is. But um, I think we have, and, and Lane's back on. Miss Crute is back. back. Lane's yeah. back. Yeah, oh. I'm back. I'm seeing you though, Lane. We only oh, see pictures. Are those pets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I think oh, it was I reverse. I couldn't <laughs> figure out how to switch it. Those are the <laughs> only lessons you had to do at home. Oh, goodness. All right? the things we learned at home, I'm like amazed. Hold on, let me switch the camera. <laughs> oh, wait, still hasn't gotten it down. There you go. Oh, she, oh, she's <laughs> gone. Switch the camera, Lane. Let us know when you're back. <laughs> <laughs> that means thumbs up remote learning right there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right? There's for the, for the Zoom classes, right? Mm hmm. So what, besides your students, what else do you guys miss from being in school? Besides the kids? Like if you had Me one thing. Able to hide in a staff meeting so you can sleep <laughs> peacefully. <laughs> Not like face to face where he can catch you. Like he caught me. Ms. Dulski caught me the other day sticking my tongue out. I was like, oh, no. She's like, no. I saw that. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. What about you, Alexa? I miss seeing my coworkers like Kelly yeah. and Elaine and all my first grade teachers and Miss Garcia. I just I miss being with everyone. Miss being in the building. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Just, you know. Just having fun and laughing and not being as stressed as right now. 
Yeah, it was, and it's I have to say, stressful at home. I agree. Yeah, 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 definitely. But I have to say, you guys have a great principal too, Sharky. We do. Like anytime I tell somebody that my kids go to forty two, they're like, "Oh, you have the best principal," and it, it's true. Like Colette, does your principal? Our principal does stop and drop. Like oh, he so does mine. Oh, he we does. Love, oh. Okay, so uh, my kids go to fifty six. Uh, we have uh, Phil Carollo is our principal, and he that was my school. He, amazing he does stop and drop he's at the gate he brings out a radio every friday when the kids are coming into the gate i see him at everything he is present he is with the kids yeah, he reads the them kids. bedtime stories every night during quarantine on facebook he reads uh, a bedtime story for the kids um he's just so involved and um I have to say, like the first day, his first year was my daughter's first year of kindergarten when she started kindergarten. So he was new to the school, but I have never heard anybody say a bad thing about the man. I am totally yeah. happy with the way that he runs the school. Um, and he's a little easy on the ice too, just saying. Well. So, <laughs> so, but I've never seen your principal. I've never seen your principal. <laughs> Listen, what are you going to do? Yeah. But, no, but I'm very happy, like I said, uh, definitely a great principal when they're involved like that. Like, I don't remember that, like, when we were kids. Like, I don't remember I, that. I don't, I don't think I remember my, my principal at all. I mean, I, I remember them. his name only because we sang it in a song, but I don't oh. remember oh. Giuliani, PS36. Um, but other than that, I don't remember anything about him. But I can't, yeah. I think my children will always remember him, so. Yeah, no, no I, I think so, too. And I know. Yours was old? No, yeah, that was mine. And I remember his name was Tutnauer. Principal oh, Tutnauer. Wow. We used to call him King Tut because we used to. <laughs> I don't have a who has 56. I was one of the first graduating uh, when they opened. I was like, oh, oh, wow. Wait, when did it open, though? That was like, it's not so long. You must be really young. I'm, I'm young. Um, yeah, I'm just going to really say. Young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they opened, I think, in 1998 or 1999. Oh, when I graduated high school in 1998. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she was going into kindergarten. Yeah. Hey, girl. I had, um, Come back. Hi. Yay. Switch um, computers. Oh, I love it. But I had so. Mr. Scally as my, um, he was the assistant principal. I know that Mr. Scally was the principal then, finally, but he was memorable. And I'm sure he could. Yeah, no, I know our school when we did the fun run, um, well, I, I, which I, I which I love. That's like one of the best yeah. fundraisers I think that we did yeah. was the fun run. And well, besides last year, we did the boo at the zoo. That was not boo at the zoo. I'm sorry, boo at forty two. <laughs> not, not boo at the zoo. Too many. So many, everybody does a boo now, but we do boo at forty two, and that was a lot of fun too. But the fundraiser, you uh, the kid that like. Uh, raises the most money gets to actually slime the principal and he'll sit there Colette like with a with a tarp yeah, on the floor too. we and have that too yes. the same yes. and Antonio won it for the second grade like he was one of the highest in the second grade because my mother he he, my, my, he talked my mother into giving him anything so she, I don't even know how much she gave him because he, he had to slime there he's like I have to do it Nona please so I think she gave him like a thousand dollars for him to throw cherries because they were turning him into a uh, Sunday, yeah. and he got to throw the cherries or the sprinkles at him, and it made his whole year that he got to throw cherries at his principal for the for the fun run. And but that's things that you remember and things that you miss, like yeah. that we miss all those things. Yeah, in the eighties, you know? that never happened. Never, never. No, yeah, no, we we a lot of the good stuff. A lot we of did, and I feel bad for the graduating kids, like the fifth graders, eighth grade, high school. Uh, like, you know, we keep saying it. I, I can't imagine going through that and not getting to finish your last year in school. Not a prom, no. not a graduation. No, no. no. Horrible, for real. But Elaine, you missed the last question. What, besides your students, what do you miss from being in school? Uh, my colleagues. Yeah. 100%. I would look forward to lunch going out with Kelly and Allie and some of the other girls and just like grabbing a sandwich, 
for drinks. Sometimes we would go to pizza parlor, have like the lunch special. We would all split and we would just talk about our day. And you know what? Sometimes during those conversations, we would realize that there's a kid that we all need to focus on a little more. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I miss. And I miss teaching my kids how to play kickball. Because yeah. in, June, in June, every year since I've been there 21 years, every year I would take, I've only taught K1 and 2, but I would take my kids outside in June and teach them kickball. And oh. to this day, I have kids who are 20 something who are like, Miss Scrooge, I have three so here saying, Oh my God, do you remember when you taught us how to play kickball? <laughs> it's so the little that, things. Yeah, it's that's even not little. It's huge to them because right, right. you can't, you cannot replace being with your kids. You no. can't. Mm. And the whole no, you can't. thing, like, don't get me wrong, my my class, the kids whose mom signed on and followed the lessons that were individually planned for them, they did great. But we would have been having so much fun in June. Yeah, like, yeah, it's true. They missed, and they're only kindergarten, but they missed out on a lot of the good stuff, like the things that make them say, hey, I love my school. I love, go I mean, my the kids love yeah. school, but the end of the year is just like, yeah, this is so mm -hmm. much fun. This is yeah, great. it's true. It's true. You get to yeah. do all the fun. Like I was booked to come to, because I do the, the travel art classes, and I was supposed to come to do um, second grade. And we had like three days that we were going to do the whole second grade and, and paint the butterflies with them. And even things like that, like I miss going to, cause usually from May to June, no, well at April to June, I'm booked with coming to the schools and doing the painting trips and the kids love them. And, and it, and it, it really sucked this year, not being able to do it. It really did. Cause you look forward to it. Cause you make the kids day. Like even it's one day out of the classroom for them and they're having a great day because you're there and, and, you know, we didn't get to do any of that this year. Yeah, that was horrible. And it's just, you you build up to that all year of like all the hard work and you look forward to that end, mm -hmm. having fun and that bonding. Yes. And, and you you just enjoy the last couple of moments together, you know, whether yeah. it's school carnival or we, you know, we do the talent show, um, you know, and it's just those moments that you really miss being with them. And yeah, it's yeah, true. They miss out on that. It's very sad. And, you know. and it, it, especially like for like Antonio, he's in third grade. So the first half of third grade is getting you ready for the state test. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's work, 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 work. Mm -hmm. And then once March is done, the teacher promised, oh, we're going to have a great from March to June. It'll be all fun. You guys mm -hmm. did it. Hooray. And this year, we, you know, he got screwed out of luck with that one for this year. Right. Oh, right. Right. Next year. That's totally the truth. Like at the end of the year, you're like, hey guys, you did such a great job. Yeah. We're going to order pizza. Like I get right. pizza delivered from whoever my friends are that own pizzerias on Staten Island and, and they deliver pizza and we have pizza or we have Italian ice day mm -hmm. or kickball day or whatever. And those are the things the kids work. They work so hard all year long. And all I, mean, year. Yeah. I teach kindergarten, but my kindergartners, work so hard like you guys got a lot dude you did more work remotely than my third grader i was like what i was like what the hell is going on? i'm like, what is this? like i know what? i got messages from parents they're like my my like, daughter my, my daughter's friend is in so and so's class um can they sign into your class i'm like give them my code but tell them they can't piss and moan about me on facebook <laughs> yeah right you're Just a guest Oh, You're so you guys kid. didn't you guys didn't have like um like kindergarten was all doing the same thing or no you guys were doing your oh wow so I thought you all had to follow your like a set like a set no. schedule or no you did your no, own no. all right well here's the thing like with my class I have kids who don't know their letters and sounds then I have children who are beginning to read then I have children who can really read and then I have kids who are reading on a level J like over and above the top so you have to like make everything work for each child so you can't just put a blanket oh here guys you're all gonna do let's read a level d book because that's all you're supposed to do yeah it, it's just not how it goes we had to teach to individual students and that's what made this so much harder 
Yeah. Like, honestly, like I miss being with my children a million percent, but I also miss being able to have everything I need within reaching distance. Yeah, that's so true. When I would sign out at the end of the day, I'm on my computer until seven, eight at night finding videos that say, oh, this is the spelling pattern we're working on. And it did it the way I would do it. And then I'm also finding books for them for whatever we're learning in social studies or literacy. It was a lot. It, it really is. was a lot. Uh, yeah. I, I, it's, and like you said, you your job didn't end at no. 2.35. You were I, was, yeah. I was getting messages from parents from 5 o'clock till 9 o'clock at night in the beginning. Wow. Oh, I don't know my password. Can you give me the password again? Yeah. For me, and I'm like, okay, I did it. So for the first like so many weeks, my husband was like, "It's nine o'clock at night. What are you doing?" I'm like, "Well, mom, she doesn't know the password." He goes, "Okay, didn't you give it to her like 16 times already?" I'm like, "Yeah, I did, but apparently she didn't save it. Whatever." So we were online, and it's not just me. I was at the beach yesterday with two teachers, and they, they were saying the same thing. It's like you felt the need to be there because. Mm -hmm. We weren't really there. You know yeah. what I mean? In yeah. the classroom, parents know, okay, 815, 235, on Monday and Tuesday, Mrs. Crute's there till okay, almost yeah. 12 o'clock. I can reach out to her. She'll help me, but whatever. But during this, it was like you you had to go above and beyond and you had to help the people who needed you because who else was gonna help them? You felt right. you had to like overcompensate because like she said, you weren't there in person. And you felt like, you know, also because who had different schedules? If you had essential workers that were working throughout the day and they weren't there for their child, you felt the need like, okay, I have to answer them because now's their time. They need to do it with their child now. And you felt you had to be there for them. So it was, right. like, it was all hours of the night. It just, you felt compelled to be there and help and answer and just like be on call all the time. I agree. Yeah, it's hard. no, it is hard. It's hard. It was hard for you guys. It was hard for the kids too. You know, like I said, the typing and the printing out things and taking pictures of things and are we doing it right? And Mr. Mr. Lachardi, the music teacher, I wanted to kill him the whole time. Wait, I had parents sending. Me I can music. say that because I'm I know him personally. You could and say he's lucky, he's lucky I didn't text him because I'm like, you know what? I did I did half of the worksheets for the kids. I was doing them at like midnight, which she had to know because that's when I was submitting them. And I'm like, all right, this is a cello and I'm Googling this. All right, this is the drum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I had to text from Google Classroom at midnight. Oh, Johnny yeah. hands yeah. in <laughs> right. Francesco and Vincenzo Giamato handed in their music assignment for the week. Yep. I have parents sending it to me. They're like from last year, like my kids from last year who are now in first grade. They're like the parents are messaging me on Facebook because you can message somebody and they're like, Mrs. Crook, do you know what this means? I'm like, ask your kid if they know what ta ta t t ta means. Oh, yes. Oh, my like, God. Yes. <laughs> right? That one assignment. And she's like, my daughter said no. I go, no, you tell your daughter. I said she knows it. She knows ta ta ti ti ta. Yeah. Right? And then she's like, oh, is that what that means? But it's very hard to teach certain subjects. Right. Like to see the notes, like you like Ant Antonio knew them. Like when he would watch the video, he'd be like, Oh, I know I did that in kindergarten. He knew the whole okay. time. Ta but if it's them and me, I had no idea what these things were. I'm like, what is this? And we would on Facebook, the moms would be like, Did you do the music? And we would post it and then just copy it off of each other and just hand it because it was hard. It was hard. Yeah, the music was hard. But like so a lot of the remote learning was really hard to do. Like in the beginning, I started I started having Google Meets from day one. I had an 8.30 meet and I had a one o'clock meet because I had people who okay. didn't want to wake up early. Right. And I would just meet with my kids and whatever. And then I did reading groups where I put their reading levels and I did reading groups, which I would preface it with parents. Extra noise mm -hmm. in the background is really not yeah. going to make it work. Right. So yeah. like put your child in a really quiet place. And then this will be good. And for the most part, it was good. But you always had the one person who has like other stuff going on in their house, and you heard them screaming and yelling. Oh, and then <laughs> the first sound that the computer hears just like blurs out everything else. Yeah. So you, 
okay. So I had reading groups and then we did the running records where you would flip your screen and the kid could read to you. And then you had the parents in the background going, duh. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Mom, Dad, please don't do that. I, I said to the I said to the parents, I go, you do know I can hear you, right? Right. And we started laughing, and I'm like, like we're doing this to help your child because we've been doing reading groups and then pointing out what they need to work on and telling each parent this is what your child needs to work on. At the end of the reading group, I'd have all the parents come back, but. Again, it's not the same as being in a classroom. Yeah, yeah. I'm really hoping that we go back at, to some extent of classroom instruction. Whether it's a week on, a week off, we're still going to be on. You know, yeah. if they get a week on and then a week remote, uh, which is what they were saying and on the parent survey and then the teacher survey, Yeah, we're still going to be on every week. I don't know if we're going to go live for the kids who are home, but that poses a whole nother plethora of questions. Like if I'm live and I'm teaching a lesson on phonics and two kids who are home online have questions, who's going to answer them because I'm teaching. So how am I going to answer them? Yeah. You know, it's all just craziness. It is. But I have to cut you guys a little short because we are going to announce our winner in a little while. So I want to say thank you so much, Miss Garitano, Miss Crute, and Miss Zito for coming on tonight and talking to us. And have thank a great you. summer, ladies. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for coming on, guys. So, Colette, we had... I have How many pages. entries did we have? I just kept seeing it. The share, the share, the share, the share, the share. <laughs> Is I have 62 teachers nominated. Wow. So what I'm gonna, yeah, it, it was good. It's almost as good as the um, the nurse one. Then the nurse okay. one was a big one for us. But we have some great sponsors before I pull out the winner. Okay, we what do we got? Have, what do we got? We got we got a ton of gift cards. We have um, Macy's, we have Starbucks, we have Dunkin' Donuts gift cards, Amazon cards, STK is donating a um $150 gift certificate to go have Ooh. dinner. Yes. We got Main Street Coffee, which is my favorite coffee shop. Of course you um, got Main Street Coffee. <laughs> I love they actually text me. They actually text me they and they did? like, yes, they're like, we want to donate. So um, we have to go now that I'm, I'm working. We, you have to meet me there. Yeah, I will. I'm there. So uh, we got Main Street Coffee. We got $25 gift certificate and some of their freshly um, ground coffee. Oh, nice. And Techie Geek donated a huge box of chocolates, a bottle of wine. Oh, and some Mike Bloomfield. There yes. you go. Yes. <laughs> he did it for you, Colette. My arch enemy. No, I'm just kidding, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you guys, for, everyone, for donating. I'm going to definitely put out like a thank you post and name everyone that did. Um, also let's pick out the winner. Ready? So what I did for the nurses is I wrote down. Oh no, we can't hear you. You're not mute. Unmute yourself. You're on mute. I didn't mute myself. That must've been a technical uh, glitch. Was it? But, um, mute? it was Mike. He's, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's coming on to, to conspire against you. All right, so we have 62 names. What I'm going to do is I have 62 numbers in here, okay? I'm going to pull up the number and the paper plate folds it up. <laughs> professional, right? Watch, watch. I'm going to pick out the number. I'm close my eyes. I'm going to pick it. They better like coffee, these people. They got a lot, a lot of a coffee. Lot of yeah. And the winning number is 22. Oh, oh. So let's see who number 22 is. I can't is. wait. Give it number to me. 22 is Carrie Botrus. Oh, so Mrs. Carrie Botrus, you know her? Yes, yes. so she ah. is um, actually one of Molly's friends from school's mom, but she doesn't teach at 56. She's a teacher somewhere else. Oh, so awesome. That's she so funny. A big, beautiful basket from us. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> right? Wow. So we will be delivering that basket to you next week after fourth, the whole of big 4th of July weekend is done and we will personally, so I'm going to contact the person that nominated her and um, going to reach out and get her address and send it That's to her. awesome. Do you know yes. who nominated her? 
I don't. I have to look back on okay. the feed. Oh, that's so exciting. Yes, I yes, never so win anything exciting. myself. I'm excited to know someone who won. I never win. <laughs> so anyway, Colette, we are oh wait, hold on. I think Todd's coming on. Todd, all right, Todd, come on. He's gotta he's gotta talk about what's coming on next. Oh, there he is. Oh, it's a special edition. Oh, that's not the kind of show that we have. We don't talk it's that a, way. Look is who that said Mike that. Look who's off. Is it Mike Bloomfield? Freaks out. Is, is it? it? Is it? We don't talk that way here. That's Wine down Wednesday. That's your arch nemesis we're, who just chimed in and called me an la- asshole. We're ladies. Live on air in front of 10 million. I never would say. We're ladies. What does he do? Drink the Corona? Just what is he stroking? What is that? Is that a Corona? What do we got back there? All right, go ahead, Todd. Yeah, is that, a, is that a problem? What he's drinking? No, but he has a no. mask on. Right, I don't something. understand Wait, what's happening. So, so we're at partners. It's, I just got sprayed by light with the Lysol. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, that thing of Lysol. This is uh, Mike Bloomfield's setup. He is the farthest away. He's about ten feet away from all of us. Yeah, I was going to say, how do you get him out of the house? I, look at him. He's drinking it's, it's a, a beer with feet. a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's drinking Lysol, actually. That's, that's his drink. That's his like, talent. Because he's out of his fucking gourd. But uh, anyway, um, a great show, ladies. Congratulations to the winner. I think that was very cool. Uh, Moss is here as well. You can see him. Hi, now. Moss. So we're getting ready to go on. We'll be on in a couple in a couple minutes. Uh, so great job, ladies. Just want to say stay tuned for Gotham After Dark coming up right after you guys. Awesome. Have a great show. Colette, one more thing. We yeah. have a very special guest next week. I know. I'm so excited. I am so excited. Are you going to tell them who it is? Or are you going yes, to make gonna tell them who okay, it is? Go. No, I'm not going to tell them who it is. So we have, if you are on Instagram, you know um, One Funny Mommy very much, right? Everyone knows Lisa. She is hysterical. She is a dear friend of mine. And she's coming on next week to talk about what made her get into comedy, what she's doing, and it's just going to be, just be prepared for lots of laughs. And we're going to have her sister, Jamie, who's who's going to come on with her too. And Jamie is from Little Miracles Photography. She rents the um, studio with me. So it's going to be exciting to hear their story and have Lisa on. I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't it's going to be so much fun. I know. But I want to wish everyone a very happy, healthy, and safe 4th of July. Yes. Thank you yes. again to all the teachers, all the wonderful nominees. And just stay safe. Don't go crazy with the fireworks. Don't eat too much, Colette. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> with, your, with your Weight Watchers. <laughs> no All righty. Enjoy. Thanks for Good having night, us. everybody. Good night.